Hello, it is Friday, September 10th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It is a Friday puzzle today, and less importantly, it is my birthday, so perhaps I will be rewarded with a nice, smooth solve. We'll have to see. It's a Friday puzzle, so you never know. Could be quite a tricky one. Yesterday was quite a tricky one for some. That was one of the most divisive puzzles, I think, I've seen yet in the comments. Some people really liked it. Some people absolutely detested it. Uh, either way, we have some bits of context. Chaz Maru points out that aliment is a French word for food, more specifically, a word to describe foodstuff or ingredients on nutrition labels. It's one of the many French culinary words imported after William's conquest, such as beef, mutton, pork, etc. But this one eventually grew out of fashion in modern English. The word comes from the same Latin word, alimonia, for nourishment, food, or sustenance, which gave the English word alimony. I thought it must have been related, so that's good knowledge from Chaz Maru. Bill the Cat says, You remarked that Airbnb is a strange name. It's called that because the site started as a simple way to reserve nights on the page creator's air mattress. An Airbnb, an air bed and breakfast. Obviously, it's changed a lot since then, but the name stuck. That's interesting. Uh, don't think I knew that. Kathy Swope points out that a skort, like a mullet, is one thing in the front, a skirt, and another in the back, short. Skorts are typically worn in golf and other athletic endeavors. And Bill the Cat replies to say they can also be a full skirt attached to shorts underneath. So there we go. The other, <laughs> the overwhelming dominating topic of discussion in the comments yesterday was around radians being referred to as a metric measurement. Uh, I'm not going to recap all of the discussion because it was quite voluminous, but uh, suffice to say, I did a bunch of reading on the metric system, and my takeaway is that radians are what are called an SI-derived unit. They're part of the SI, the System International or International System of Measurements, to which I think most countries in the world are signatory. And it's not a primary SI unit. It's considered a derivation. It's technically meters divided by meters, which doesn't isn't that useful necessarily, but it is officially an SI-derived unit. The metric system itself, that term doesn't have any specific official meaning, but it's generally used to describe the SI units, um, the most famous of which are, are grams and meters, um, but also uh, includes these SI-derived units, sort of second-order measurements, such as radians. So that's how radians can be, I think, legitimately described as a part of the metric system. So there you go. People had some different opinions about that in the comments, but that's my take after doing a fair amount of reading about it. So we've got a Friday puzzle. Shouldn't waste any more time. Might be a tricky one. Let's get on with it. This is a crossword by Adrian Cabbington, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay, we've got some long acrosses here, so could be some tricky things. Here we have a hack job. I always find the, um, especially on a, on a Friday, where it's a relatively straightforward puzzle, but on the tricky side, it's often easier to start with the downs, because um, these long answers can just be really, really tricky. Anyway, so here we have blank bra, so kind of bra, wire bra maybe, I'm not sure, skater's leap, an axle, perhaps? Is that? I always forget if the skating term of axle is L-E or E-L. Let's put X in there and see if that helps here. News alert of old. Could be extra, extra, sort of a newspaper boy on a corner, stereotypically yelling extra, extra. That would be helpful if that were true. That would get us a lot of crosses. G2G, got to go, I suppose. Not really sure what that's getting at entirely. Colored rings, areola, areole, maybe. Let's try it and keep looking around. Intruded within, could be barged, barged in, intruded, on again. Re-something, classic again. If there's an E or an R in the first two letters, you can often insert the other one. Perform tasks according to encoded instructions as a computer file. Performing tasks, or performing tasks according to encoded instructions as a computer file. Executing? No. I'm not really sure what that 
means entirely in this case. Dispenser in many a vestibule. Could be an ATM, an automated teller machine, a cash machine, cash point. Edit out as from a photo could be cropped to crop out to reduce the dimensions, the size, not the dimensions, I suppose, but the size of a photograph to remove things from it. Name associated with boxers. Oh boy, this, uh, I wonder, I'm, be- I'm guessing this purely on the boxing theme and the number of letters and the fact that we have an A in there. I think Layla Ali came up maybe a month or so ago as a boxer, the daughter of Muhammad Ali, although that doesn't look great here, so maybe not. That was sort of a wild guess. Uh, Let's see, do we have anything else here? Hack job. Data breach? There we go. All right, so hacking, not a hack job in the sense of a sort of shoddy construction, but a hack job in the sense of a computer hack. So a slight misdirection, I would say there. Um, Have we looked at all the downs yet? Yes, we have. Have we looked at the acrosses yet? No. Hybrid citrus fruit native to China. Lemon. Oops, sorry. Some sort of lemon. Oh, (laughs) Oh, wait. No, no, it's not executing. <laughs> I already tried that, didn't I? And it didn't, it wasn't enough letters. But it really does look like executing. What is this? Performing tasks according to encoded instructions as a computer file. I don't know. On again. On again. Bad reasoning. Something logic. That work here? Ah, yes. GTG, got to go. Talk to you later. I should have, I didn't uh, immediately start going through acronyms. I was thinking of short words that would mean got to go, which was silly because with that too, especially, it's very obviously sort of texting language. GTG, got to go. TTYL, talk to you later. Oh, a Meyer lemon. Meyer lemon. I guess that's, yeah, I suppose it's, I didn't really know that that was hybrid per se, but I guess Probably most fruits we consume are hybrid, really, ultimately, at the end of the day, right? Um, They've all been bred for some property or another. So this is probably a demi-bra. And then, oh, illogic. Bad reasoning is illogic. And then we have Axel. And that was my, this is what I thought. I always think Axel is spelled this way, the E-L, the skating version. And And then I always second guess myself. Really have to commit that to memory somehow. So on again, could it be relit as in a candle or something? We'll handle this one. Let us, we'll, we'll solve this crossword. Perform, maybe it's executions. I don't know. This is really taunting me. (laughs) There's probably some very obvious thing. I'm sorry. Name associated with boxers. Oh, Hanes as in boxer briefs, um, underwear, pants. Haynes is a brand. All right, piece of the action. A percent, I suppose. An agent maybe gets a piece of the action. They get 10% of the actor's fee. Emmy and Golden Globe nominated actress blank Rachel Wood. Evan Rachel Wood. I'm not sure I know who that is offhand, but I definitely recognize the name. Past. I don't know, went maybe. Lean. Choose from the restaurant menu have the toe of a ge- of a ge- uh, geographical boot the toe of a geographical boot what is the toe I'm trying to think is it italy that's being referred to finished with could be rid of i'm finished with you i'm rid of you maybe gives a hand literally disciple Oh, a Sikh, maybe? I bet that's what that is. Member of the Sikh religion. Upset of the century, say. Upset of the century, say. Not sure offhand. I'm going to keep marching through the crossword, actually. We'll come back up to that corner later. I'm sure there's some things I could be getting there, but I'm not not in my element up there, so I'm going to move on. Gamete producer. So this is something to do with the reproductive process. Um, but I'm not immediately seeing it. 
Uh, AAA service. This could be the American Automobile Association. They could give you a tow. That <laughs> that tantalizingly gets us closer to executing or execution or executions or something. Eventually we'll get there and I'll feel silly for not having seen whatever it was earlier. More contrite. If you're more contrite, you could be sorrier, demonstrating contrition, regret, pending acceptance in a way. Not sure yet. Too long. Let's keep looking around. Unexplained by science, say. There's a lot of says in this. Or no, I guess this is in a way, that's say. There was another say around here somewhere. Gives a hand, could end in S. Heaps could be scads or slews. Lots of things. What is this? Meeting after a meeting. Something off, maybe? Marshall under Napoleon. Oh boy. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Matar in Indian cuisine. Oh, I don't remember. I've certainly had dishes with the word matar in them, but I don't remember what it is. That is that is frustrating. Let's keep going. LAX approximation. LAX is Los Angeles International Airport. So an approximation at an airport could be an estimated time of either arrival or departure, so an ETA or ETD. Don't really think there's any way to collapse that down just yet, but let's, let's look around a bit. Oh, C12 down. Blank the 25 down, founder of the Kingdom of Hawaii. Okay, interesting. And then what was, sorry, what was the thing that related to that? I've already lost it. How did I do that? Maybe it was just, the, was it just those two? Okay, it must have just been these two. I thought there was a third clue involved, but apparently not. We'll have to come back to that. Claude Hopper. Oh, this reminds me of, this reminds me of that clue yesterday, whose answer was dolt, and it was something that sounded like this, a word that clearly refers to someone who's a bit of a, a bit of a dolt. All right, what fuel economy standards might address? Efficiency? Emissions? Carbon footprint? I don't know. None of those things fit. Cry of relief. Could be few, hue. Could be, well, could be P-H-E-W or W-H-E-W. I mean, it could be something else as well, but I could easily imagine it being either of those. That W here would make this slews, or at least it could be that. So maybe I leave out the first letter and fill in the remainder. We see if that helps at all. Blank tag, laser tag, it could be, with that E there. Let's see if that helps. Oh, Paris to Zurich direction. So now that we have the southeast at the end, it's south by southeast or east by southeast. My guess would be Paris to Zurich direction. My guess would be east, but I don't know trying to think of whether it's more easterly or more southerly. Unexplained by science, say. Abnormal? No. Paranormal. There we go. Paranormal. Unexplained by science. I guess that's true. Is it? Yeah. I suppose I always think of paranormal as meaning sort of supernatural, but I guess effectively what supernatural means is simply that science doesn't yet have an explanation for it. So yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Performing tasks according to encoded instructions as a computer file, could this be executable? I don't understand how that matches the, the clue. I guess it's saying it's describing an application that is executable, and that thing also is performing tasks according to encoded instructions as a computer file? I guess so. I suppose so, yeah. That really reads to me more like executing but because of performing tasks. But, you know, fair enough. I think this does technically work. So I'll have to accept it. Oh, oh, are, is Matar P's a P? I think that might be it. And then meeting after a meeting would be a debrief. And then what was this? Pending acceptance in a way, waiting in some way. Here we have anago on a Japanese menu. Eel, I guess. 
that also Unagi or am I mixing things up? Pending acceptance in a way. It could be waitlisted. If something is waitlisted, it is pending acceptance. It has not yet been accepted. Wow. Heavy, we just got some very heavy rain starting. I don't know if that's coming through on the mic, but it was just, just like that instant, uh, very loud rain on the roof. Hope it's not too bad. All right, let's see. Where did we leave off? Get ready to drive. So this could be obviously driving a car. That would be the most obvious. It could be a golf drive, I suppose. Could be something else as well. Those are the seem like the two most obvious. Um, but I'm not sure yet. Some Christmas purchases. Well, they probably are end with an S because it's plural. Boy, that rain is really coming down. Perceived to be. Wanted to say seems, but I don't think that fits. Platform for a performer. A riser, potentially. Um, a platform that uh, could potentially be lifted. Ah, uh, and what is this? Ah, uh, and... I'm not really sure what this is meant to communicate. Is it communicating the syllable ah? Uh? Don't, it's not ringing a bell for me. Let's keep looking around. Uh, nickname for Chicago's Cloudgate sculpture. Oh, don't know. Don't think I'm familiar with that. We'll have to come back to it. Words when throwing caution to the wind. Uh, not sure yet. Rain or shine. I don't know. Ever, maybe? Not really sure. What comes after the fall? Well, idiomatically, pride comes after the fall. Or aphoristically, I suppose. Um, no, pride comes before the fall, sorry. What comes after the fall is winter. Winter something? I don't know. Fibrous part of a potato. Fibrous part of a potato. I suppose the root of the potato wouldn't be fibrous, would it? I'm just trying to think of four-letter things. Feeling of otherness, alienation. Absolute delight. Could be glee, maybe. I was just looking at some of the crosses around here. What's this one? No good nick. No good nick. Bad, a baddie. A pill, maybe? A pill is someone who's more of a pain as opposed to someone who's actually bad. But let's look around, see if that unlocks anything. I don't think it's pill. What is this? Common sitcom rating. Oh, so this would be television rating system in the US. So TVPG, I think, is what that would probably be. Rain or shine. So what is either one of these? Oh, a, ver a verb, maybe? Although I would think... You'd think it would say EG or something like that to indicate that these are examples of the thing rather than synonyms. I don't know. Let's let's see. Cavill. Um, where the rain really stopped. We got an incredibly strong outburst out of nowhere and it's already stopped. Um, I'm going to remove, what was it that I put in there? I'm going to remove verb for now. We'll come back to it. Oops. Backgrounds in theater. Could be, by backgrounds, it might mean something like backdrops or scenery, set dress. Oh, set dressing. No, I said set dressing, and then I got excited because of that D, but it doesn't fit. Perceived to be. Oh, saw as. In other words, I perceived this clue to maybe be referring to set dressings. I saw it as referring to set dressings. Not the best example, um, but it, but uh, yeah, saw as does fit. So what would this be? What comes after the fall? Winter. Got that W again. So that really could be winter something. Winter time. Winter time comes after fall. Top marks. End in an S. Pens. Marks with a pen. Oh, tens. Ten out of ten, as in ratings in the Olympics, for instance. 
Comment after a cue could be I'm on after your cue to go on stage. Kirsten of SNL, Kirsten Wig, I think, W I I G. Uh, backgrounds in theater. Could be something signs, right? Oh, oh, set designs. So set dressing was in the right direction, but needed a different word. Set designs. There we go. Uh, oh, I see. Oh, sorry. I completely misread this. I somehow didn't realize that there was a hyphen right before the and. I read this as a dash a dash a space and, which was just beyond baffling. I was thinking ah and something, which made no sense. But in fact, it's and scene, which in, with a nice cross to the theatrical set designs. It's pretty good. Here we have, oh, I see. Words when throwing caution to the wind. Screw it. Screw it. Let's just throw verb into 56 across. Come what may. No, I'm not actually going to do that. <laughs> and here we have Earths in sci-fi. I guess in sci-fi, Earths is always referred, often referred to as Terra. Uh, cat with blank of joy emoji. Tears of joy, I guess. Uh, cry of relief. Oh, right. So we have P or W here. And then here we have jewelry, jewelry creator Elsa who helped define the Tiffany brand. Well, it definitely looks like Peretti, doesn't it? Waretti doesn't really sound like a very plausible name. Okay. Oh, oh, here we go. Founder of the Kingdom of Hawaii, Kamehameha. Um, King Kamehameha was uh, the founder of the Kingdom of Hawaii. Um, I did know that, actually, and I didn't, didn't bring it to mind when I was looking at this earlier. I don't know his given name, if that's what this is looking for, or at least I don't remember it off the top of my head. All right. So gives a hand. Ah, I see. Gives a hand of cards. Deals a hand of cards. So lean is skew. To choose from the restaurant menu, maybe it is have. Thought it would be something more specific than that, but maybe not. Upset of the century, say, would be a shocker. That makes sense. Here, the toe of a, oh, the toe of a geological boot, Oman. Right. Okay. And then past is indeed went. Okay. So, right. I was very skeptical that these two would be have and went, but indeed they were. So sometimes even a Friday crossword can be more straightforward than you expect it to be. You never know. Uh, what is the theme here? Is there a theme? I mean, no, there's not. Right, of course. Friday, Friday and Saturday are themeless, as we now know. So, all right, let's, let's, let's head back to this area of the clue. What fuel economy standards might address... And then what was this down here? Marshall under Napoleon. Boy, I wish I remembered this. I've been listening to this podcast series called The Age of Napoleon for about two years straight now. So you'd think I would remember this kind of thing, but I don't. Marshall under Napoleon. Boy, that's annoying. Uh, cellist Jacqueline. Uh, this I just don't know. Cavill. This is, what is this? A sort of... Uh, I can't remember if this word is sort of a, an enemy or something of sort of negative element of something. Uh, let's see. I'm kind of kind of running out of steam in this zone of the crossword, unfortunately. Fibrous, oh, fibrous part of the potato, the peel, perhaps? I suppose that's fair enough. Would that be correct? So then this would be a no good nick. Mm. Oh, a heel, a heel. So someone who's uh, kind of, yeah, a, a, a bad guy sort of figure. All right, so Rain of Shine, maybe this is verb. I'm getting very surprised by this puzzle. Some of these very straightforward, sort of in, in, in some ways almost misdirection through simplicity because I'm looking for something more I'm looking for something farther afield, I guess, is what I'm saying. So nickname for Chicago's Cloud Gate sculpture. It could very well start with the. A lot of nicknames start with the. So that's possible. Travel authority. Um, gamete producer. Clodhopper. So this could be ETA or ETD.
naval type. Naval type. This could be any or Audi, um, a, uh, a belly button. And with that ET from ET A or D, it would have to be Audi. So could gamete producer be gonad? Does that, does that follow? Does that track? I think so. Um, I'm going to struggle with this Kame, Kamehameha. Sorry, I think I mispronounced that earlier. I might have put two Ks in, uh, in it. Kamehameha. I might have, I'm going to probably not be able to get this until the end, I suspect, which is a little frustrating. So I'll have to do the rest of these. <laughs> um, what fuel economy standards might address? Sorry. Why am I not seeing this? Something it. Sorry, I really feel as though this should be staring, absolutely staring me in the face. Why isn't it? Oof, it's driving me crazy. Um, get ready to drive. Oh, tee up. If it is the golf meaning, it could be tee up. And then what would this be? Cellist Jacqueline, uh, could be a French name that would fit with the D and the P, potentially. Uh, oh, I don't think I looked at this. River personified by the god Happy. The Nile? Nickname for Chicago's Cloud Gate Sculpture. This is another one I don't know how I'm possibly going to get until I have all the crosses, which is dangerous with this name that I also don't know. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Oh, could this be a rube? Someone who's who's uh, who's um, gullible, easily easily misled. Claude Hopper. That sounds pretty plausible. Oh, oh, sorry. I uh, I am a fool. This is this is not Kamehameha's given name. I ignore. I started ignoring the clue once I once I remembered the name itself. Uh, it says blank the twenty five down, Kamehameha the Great. Probably could have gotten that much earlier if I didn't completely ignore the formatting of the clue. I'm very sorry about that. So air quality is what fuel economy standards might address. Good lord, thank you. Sorry everybody. Oh, and a cavil is a quibble, so sort of, uh, yes, that that actually, uh, I did not remember that, but that that is the case, uh, sort of a little nit to pick. All right, so the nickname looks like the bean to me. This might be Jacqueline Dupre, perhaps. Some Christmas purchases, oh, furs, Christmas trees, and then travel authority, ah, I see, NBA referee, and that makes LAX approximation ETA. All right, there we go. So I had a very, I think, a pretty good start on this puzzle in general. I think I started pretty strong and then really slowed down as I was cleaning up the final, the final clues. So um, glad I was able to, <laughs> to power through to the end because I did hit a bit of a, did get into a bit of a rut there. So my apologies. Um, I hope you enjoyed this puzzle. It was, uh, I think, a pretty classic themeless puzzle in the sense that we had some long answers. Um, some of them were a bit, a bit clever, uh, like extra, extra sort of. It's sort of a fun answer, but most of them pretty straightforward, uh, pretty straightforward cluing and pretty straightforward answers. You just have to get it. So uh, I'm curious how that kind of puzzle lands with people. You know, there isn't really anything to to pick up on in terms of gimmicks or cleverness. You just have to sort of get into the groove of um, coming to terms with the cluing and the answers and just get it in the puzzle, get the crosses. There really isn't anything, um, anything else here. So very classic themeless, I think, in that sense. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was a very nice, well-constructed puzzle. There wasn't a lot of crossword ease in here, really. I mean, we've got these directions, which are always always useful to, <laughs> to fill a few arbitrary letters, I suppose. Um, but uh, 
just lots of very different kinds of clues and answers all over the place. Good bread and butter Friday, Fameless. I enjoyed it. Hope you did too. And if you did, why not subscribe to this channel? And then you will see all these videos, themeless and themed alike, as they go up on the channel each morning. And uh, if you think someone else might like that, someone else wants to uh, push back against illogic, push back against bad reasoning and start to use logic and good reasoning to solve crosswords, why not pass this along to them? Perhaps they would enjoy it. Uh, or maybe they would just enjoy a, uh, an extremely low-key activity playing in the background. You never know. They might. And if you particularly enjoy this series, why not contribute a couple of quid or a few bucks over on my coffee donation page, where I'm accepting donations on a one-off or monthly recurring basis in an amount of your choosing. And also, I think I am going to launch a Kickstarter. I'm sorry, not a Kickstarter. Definitely not launching a Kickstarter, that's for sure. Um, launching a um, Patreon page. So uh, what I think I will do is launch the Patreon page, but then make the benefits of the Patreon page also available to people who are monthly contributors over on the coffee page. And um, I'm going to use Patreon, I think just because I've used it in the past for other pur purposes, I'm familiar with it. It's a pretty widely used platform for people to support things on a monthly way, in a, in a, on a monthly basis. So I will be launching that pretty soon. I'm going to be doing, I think, the monthly New York Times bonus puzzles on there. What I'm hoping to also do is set up a Discord server and have people get an extra role and maybe access to a private um, supporters chat room inside the broader Discord. So I, I'm I'm not very Discord literate. Um, Discord, if you're not if you're not aware, is a um, it's a way to create sort of um, private or semi private uh, chat rooms online for members of a community to hang out in. So if you have any thoughts about that or suggestions, please do let me know because I'm not I I don't have a lot of familiarity with it. I know it's something that commonly comes along with um, this sort of community. So any ideas, let me know. Be happy to, to take those ideas. Anyway, I'll stop blathering on about this. That will be launching, I'm hoping, sometime in the next week or so. That's my goal. Uh, we'll see. I have some um, travel, family travel coming up. So the next week, week, next two weeks might, might be a little rocky for the channel. So we'll have to see how that all goes. Anyway, I will let you go. I'm blathering on and on and on. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I do hope you join me tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle, another themeless and most likely the most difficult puzzle of the week. So do join me then. I hope to see you. But until that point, have an excellent rest of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.